Hey there! So, as you can probably tell, this is going to be an emotionally broken video because, you know, I've, my hair is back, I haven't got any makeup on. Oh, um, I have got makeup on. I have the Tarte CC Color Clay Primer in Fair, and I have Miss Beauty London Pressed Powder in Ivory. Just because. <clears throat> I was a bit shiny and and you know I wouldn't normally normally I would put primer and powder on before I come on camera just because I am naturally very shiny and that picks up ten times on the camera so anyway <laughs> oh and, and there's a lump in my hair anyway you can probably tell as I said no makeup hair scraped back I'm close to the camera we get the drill by now. Also, this here is uh, the door to my. I, these are double wardrobes, and this door is broken. So yes, you can see into my wardrobe. There's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> anyway, today for my emotionally broken video, I want to speak about the reality of living with mental illness, because. Mental illness representation in the media is the best it's ever been. I won't deny that at all. It You see it in the media. It's talked about. Awareness is talked about. Different illnesses are talked about. Um, statistics are talked about. It's in programmes and soaps. It's out there. But at the same time, you I understand that when it comes to putting it in soaps and programs and stuff they're dramatizing it so it's not going to be an accurate representation of mental illness and then news news is where it gets the most accurate but even that is iffy like last week they were talking about anxiety in women and how it's twice as much as as men and i i can see that <laughs> i definitely can see how that would be but they were basically blaming social media for it and I'm not the only person who says that in fact social media helps more than anything so it's not 100% accurate in representation and then you have you have the glamorization of it which is not it it's it's so tough because it's not glamorized in the traditional sense it's it can sometimes be seen as the new trendy thing to have um anxiety for example has always been one like that that everyone and their mother has anxiety and these words are often thrown around very carelessly and I know I'm a bit pot calling the kettle black because I'm talking about this on YouTube here. But, you know, I'm not dramatising it. Anything that I've ever talked about or shown about on YouTube, when it comes to moment, well, when it comes to anything, if I'm honest, anything that I say on YouTube or on any social media, I've never dramatised it. I've never lied or fabricated it. I've never embellished it to make it look better than it is. It's always going to be 100% me. I don't lie. I just, I just don't. Um, I never have had the capability to lie, and I wouldn't want to. Um, I'd rather talk honestly to you. What's the point in lying? Um, that's part of the reason why I do these videos. So, thinking of all that, thinking of how there is not a hundred percent accurate representation in the media at all. I wanted to just chat to you about what it's like really to li live with mental illness, the reality of it. And for someone who has suffered quite severely for about four years now. Um, I have spoken about my history of mental illness before. I really do need to do a full video, but I'm worried it's going to be like three hours long. Um, I might have to split it up a bit, but I've suffered 
a quick rundown is that I've suffered with mental illness since I was 11 years old. From the age of 11 to the age of 17, I was in a constant varying levels of suffering, as in I never had a good moment in those years. I was always really fighting it. Then from the age of 17 to the age of 20, um, which is about two and a half years because of birthdays and stuff, I had a very good time with my mental illness. I was relatively stable the whole time. I did have to go back onto meds during that time, but um, a couple of weeks off work and meds and I was okay again. There was nothing like... I never had a really horrible moment and I was in a very good place for most of those most of the, those two and a half years I was very happy and then from the age of 20 to now I'm 24 and it's still going on so age of 20 upwards so four years now I'm still going I have really suffered I've had extreme um, you know, problems I have uh, <laughs> Currently, I have severe general, generalised anxiety disorder, I have depression, I have agoraphobia, and I have binge eating disorder, otherwise known as BED. And not yet confirmed, but highly likely, food avoidance slash food phobia. Um, I haven't been able to work for about four years, and I think there's this I don't have to say I think I know people glamorize not being able to work that's one part of what I want to touch on is the reality of living with mental illness if you can't work because of your mental illness mental illness sorry People glamorise it and see it as though you sit around doing nothing all day and I can see how you can see that from the outside because I can see how that would look like that. Um, especially in very extreme low moments, a lot of people can't even leave the bed so I can definitely see why people would think that. In reality at least for me, I am fighting every minute of every day. I have been teased relentlessly because I will say I'm tired and the response I normally get is what do you have to be tired for? You know, you don't work, why are you tired? When in reality I, I am fighting a never-ending battle. I have constant thoughts and only God knows what going on in my head. The reason we're not working is because we can't function. Um, our mental illness has taken over our lives. A very basic thing that humans do is we go out to work to earn money. That's what. That's how the economy. How the economy works. That's how life works. How the world works. I'd love to say that the world spins on love, but it doesn't. <laughs> this is just how it how we has to be. We have we need money to live. You need money for electricity and le why was the first thing I thought electricity? For bills and food and houses and clothes and the things that you need to be human. When you can't work, you lose part of being human. That's just how it is. I've been ashamed for a very long time that I can't work. It It's horrible because for me, beforehand, I was a nursery nurse. I was a nursery practitioner, as we now know. la di da Because people always mix us up with <laughs> actual nurses. So I looked after under fives. I would, um, I didn't have a permanent place at the time, but a permanent like, age group is what I mean. The most I've worked with the most is uh, toddlers, so sort of one year old to three year olds, that's sort of the age I know the most. And 
I loved it. I, I'm now fully trained and I always loved working with children. You miss it. You miss, for me, I miss the interaction with the children and the interaction with the other humans, <laughs> interaction with other adults as well. I miss feeling accomplishment and feeling rewards and feeling that you've done something, feeling useful and helpful. That all comes from having a job and you lose all of that when you can't work. And then of course there's the money side of things, which for most people who are unable to work then they go on benefits, which I am on. and that's a whole other kettle of fish. You have constant assessments. They hang um, it over your head a lot. So you'll get letters that say you've got to come here and if you don't, your money will be affected. And that can be such a bugbear because you're like, the whole reason I can't work is because I struggle to get out of the house and now you're telling me to come here or you're losing money. You're not helping. <laughs> it's very, very, very frustrating. Even though I am obviously extremely grateful for the money that I get. I don't want to be on it. Who the fuck would want this? You know, it's... I certainly don't want to be reliant on benefits. So I, that's the reality of your very basic living with mental illness is that at your most severe the normal human functions of working and earning money and paying bills is taken away from you. I live at home and ideally I wouldn't like to be living at home. I'd like to, I'd like to be away from here. I'd like to have my own life, I'd like to have independence, but I can't have that. And that's a good seg segue into another big thing, which is the reality. Is you lose so much independence. Obviously I, sh obviously I should say, you know, this is coming from my point of view. So not everyone is exactly the same. But for me, I've lost a lot of my independence. Most... <laughs> I don't think I've have I the only the only independence I have is at home. The minute I leave the house I'm very reliant on my mother and that causes so many problems because I can't leave the house without my mum so I can't get better without my mum and I need my mum around all the time and it's like <clears throat> Because of the issues that I had as a teenager, I only found my independence at the age of around 17 and then I lost it by the time I was 20. I, lo I didn't have independence for very long and I look forward to the day where I can get on the bus and go shopping by myself and feel perfectly content with doing so. Because the last time I did that was five years ago. And I can still remember that day like that's yesterday. It, it's really tough remembering these things because you don't want to. Because it just makes you sad for the life that you used to have. But at the same time you need them there to remind you to get better because this is what you want. It's this reality of living, you're not living, you're existing. You're, you don't live a life. You live a very sheltered existence. I'm not your typical 24 year old and 
granted I don't think I would be even if I had the capability to be I don't think I'd be a typical partying person that has never been me I like the option you know it's not so much that I, I would but I just like the option I'd like to be able to say yes or no I'd like I'd like to be considered The other day, my parents were going out for lunch, and this particular place they were going, I was really interested in. And I wasn't given a second thought, understandably as well. They just uh, planned it, and that was it. I was never asked if I ever wanted to go. And that's the reality, you're forgotten. Because you keep, if you keep um, cancelling plans, if you don't make things, you're forgotten. You exist, you don't do any more than that. I mentioned it to my mum. I said it would have, you know, I understand. But I was interested in that. I was interested in that pub, couldn't have you said, you know, and she admitted that she hadn't even thought about it because they just expected me to say no. And that's the reality. The people expect you to say no so they don't ask. And then reality is, nine times out of ten, I will say no. The reality is, people will be there to, if you're lucky, people will be there to support you. You'll have maybe a couple of people or one person, but most people, maybe they'll respect you, which to be honest is all I ask for. I don't expect any more than that. Most people can barely respect themselves most of the time, let alone anyone else. But I just ask, I ask people to respect me. Respect who I am, because mental illness is, mental illness, at least for me, has become part of me. In a way, I've embraced it, and that's the reality. When you're living with something for so long, it becomes part of who you are and I, I don't see that as a bad thing I am okay with having these illnesses and that's the reality as long as I can function if I was able to go out and work, if I was able to have friends and a social life and shop and pay, bill, pay bills and all of this, I wouldn't mind that I had these illnesses at all because they're just part of my day to day life. But instead I don't have a life. Mental illness is my life. It's my every waking moment. From the minute I go to bed to the minute the minute I wake up to the minute I go to bed, that is all that's ever on my mind. It it's I in even if I'm talking or thinking about something else, it's there. Even if you have never suffered or never or never known someone who does it's it's so constant and you know it you know this because it's like when you have for someone who's never suffered or never known anyone that's suffered it's like when you have something on your mind something niggly 
nothing big, but it, it, it's bugging you. And it's there all the time. Nibbling away at your thoughts and you try and push it away and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and that's my illness. It's always there and it never leaves and it just nibbles at you. It breaks you down. Over the past four years I've gotten worse not better and it's only this year that I've managed to improve. It's it's scary. That's the reality. The bottom line of mental illness, the reality of mental illness is that it is scary. It is frightening. You are ill. You are mentally ill. You have a mental illness that means that things in your head is not what you want to be in your head, but you can't control that. And you know that the reality is you will have that for the rest of your life. As I said before, I was diagnosed at the age of 11. Um, well, I just turned 12. So, that is 12 years ago. So for 12 years I've lived with the reality of having a mental illness. For 12 years I've lived with the reality of never feeling normal, the reality of never being who I was expected to be, the reality of never... My mum's pulling up. <clears throat> the reality of never fitting in. The reality of mental illness, the bottom line, is that it's real and it, it, regardless of the fact that it's just in your head, it's so real. People can say that it's not, they can say it till they're blue in the face, I don't care. The reality of it is that I know it's real, I can feel it, and anyone else that has suffered knows this. Anyone else that has ever experienced mental illness knows that anyone who says that mental illness isn't real is an idiot. I'm sorry, but you are. And that's the reality. I should probably shut up a bit now. But I just want to talk about the reality of what it's like living with mental illness and the reality of having your life stripped away from you. And for me personally, as someone who's never even been well enough to build a proper life, that's even worse because some of these things I've never even experienced and a lot of these things I don't think I ever will. Anyway. I am going to go. I hope this video was informative. I hope it was interesting. And until next time, just believe. Bye.